let's talk about your book know yourself know your money i read it not completely yet but almost um but i have to say to excuse myself that uh, when we also read the rest here of <laughs> so, so that's um i love it i love it so so i had one enlightening moment to be quite honest one about uh, professional life one about marriage and probably i'm not going to talk about the marriage um And what we here in our company always do is we do not only talk about business problems and solutions and processes, but really about what is you as a decision maker, your personal goal, and can be combined with the company, and then it becomes a really strong project. Um, and what I found quite interesting too that we have said sometimes similar situations, but people act differently. Uh, may it be in a you know business situation or with money. And while reading your book, we had this really this aha moment. My wife read it too, by the way. Um, and we really saw that people react differently to money. And you found a little bit like you have a good explanation for it. Your money classrooms. Again, your new book uh, available everywhere, also on Amazon. Um, how about these classrooms and what do they explain? Yes. Yeah, so like you said earlier, I mean, everyone is different, right? We're all wired differently. We all have different personalities, tendencies values all of it and so it all really boils down to okay well how can we how do you handle money for you it's know yourself so you want to be able to know what's going on and a big part of that is your childhood and how you grew up with money how your parents or parents interacted with money and so as i was writing the manuscript for this i realized you know money is communicated in two ways in a household it's communicated verbally what we say but it's also communi communicated emotionally so the feeling around the home, around money, you you know, was it good or was it not so good? Was it stress? Was it tension or was it freedom? And so I realized these ways of communicating create this graph. I was like, oh, it's a quadrant and I love graphs. So I thought, yes, it makes us a quadrant. This is great. So it creates these four money classrooms. So the first one is the anxious money classroom. And this classroom is where people grew up in a closed verbal communication home so it was not money was not talked about and it was emotionally stressed so if you grew up in this classroom you grew up never hearing about money but you felt tension around it it was not a great subject if it did get brought up it wasn't good maybe at the end of the month when bills were due you could feel your parents tighten up everything like it just oh it wasn't good classroom number two is the unstable money classroom and this is where it's verbally open so money is talked about but it's emotionally stressed. So this is the home you grew up in that you heard your parents fight about money. Um, they were they would talk about it, how how it's not good or they're not in a good situation. Or, ooh, a lot of stress or fighting with other friends or relatives about money. Like it just was a lot of conflict. Classroom number three is the unaware money classroom. So this is where it's verbally closed. Again, not talked about, but emotionally calm. So this would be a classroom that Once you, you know, graduated and went off on your own, you realize, I know nothing about money. <laughs> like, no one taught me about money and it wasn't a big deal, but it's, now I'm realizing, oh, this is important. So your head was probably in the sand growing up as a kid. Again, it just wasn't a thing. And then classroom four is definitely the healthiest money classroom and where I encourage my readers and their present day family to really try to push towards. And this is the secure money classroom. And this is where it's verbally open and emotionally calm. So you could have 10 euros in this classroom. You could have 10 million euros. It doesn't matter the amount of money. It's just that the idea that money is controlled. There's a plan in place. If your parents, you know, were still together and married, they were, they agreed. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but there was at least a plan in place and they talked about it. You heard them talk about it. They talked about it with you as a child. You know, it was that conversation. So that secure money classroom is a great place to be. But you can really go back now as an adult and hopefully even me just saying it out loud, you can kind of pinpoint, okay, this is kind of the one I grew up in, classroom one, two, three, or four, and how that affects you. So either you mirror a lot of what you knew growing up, knew growing up because that's all you know now is how your parents did it. Or I talk to people and they do the exact opposite. So they flee completely the other direction because they think, you know, oh my gosh, my parents always talked about money and it was always tension filled. So now I just want to retreat and never mention it because it, it's negative, right? It's this negative connotation um, or vice versa. So it's just, it's interesting to see how people react now with their money, but a lot of it is shaped by your environment and how you grew up.
Yeah, and a really fun story. As I mentioned, Katya and I, we read both read it. And at some point, Katya told me, Robin, Rachel is writing about us. <laughs> <laughs> because we come from different uh, classrooms, let's put it that way. And that explains yeah. the one, uh, a few discussions uh, we might have had in the past, to put it into, into a diplomatic uh, mode in case <laughs> Katya will the show yeah. later. Um, one thing you always uh, also talk about in your podcast, in your books, is uh, wealth, becoming wealthy, everyday millionaires, um, and, and wealth in general. And, and, and what I really like about Ramsey's solution is that you do not only talk about it, but you do also scientific research about it. Um, and uh, like uh, the, the biggest study on millionaires comes from your company, um, which I also had a deep dive into the data, which is super interesting, uh, I think. It's uh, like really, really reliable. I love it. Um, big question. Is there a secret of rich and is there something first generation wealthy people do differently? Well, what's interesting is majority of wealthy people are first generation wealthy. Um, so this idea that everyone's just is given money through a trust fund or something is actually statistically not true. And is there a secret? I mean, I mean, my secret would be the tortoise. I always think of the tortoise and the hare. You know, the hare, I feel like is, or I'll speak for Americans, we are like a country of here. I mean, it's just ADD yeah. all over the place and trying to do 18 different things. And we're going to just dabble in all of it. But the tortoise in the story is consistent. He's slow. It's not flashy. It's not exciting, but he's consistent. So what we have found over our study of all wealthy people, majority of them, a, a chunk of their net worth is in their home. So they own their home. They've paid it off. They own their home. And they are investing in retirement and they do it over the long haul. So that investing piece is, is huge to building wealth. I mean, mathematically, uh, if you're a math person and you hear the word compound interest, it's like, yes, you know, it, like building upon itself is, is huge when your money's working for you. And then I would say another piece is living below their means. I mean, there is something true about people that have wealth and keep it is that there's a character piece. And I love that you talk about this. Robin, that you, you talk about the person because us handling money, we're it. So, so learning how to be wise with it, having money in a really healthy place in our minds that it's not this idol, it's not the end all be all, but it's a tool to use in our lives to, to better yeah. our family and to help other people, all of that. So that character piece is really big. And I think there's a misconception that wealthy people are a bunch of snobby, you know, rich, greedy people. And are there people like that? Oh yeah, I've met some of them, right? I've gone to dinner with some people that I'm like, oh gross. Like afterwards, like, like I want to eat the <laughs> Yes, yes. But then I've met some of the most generous, kind, yep. low, I mean, you would have no idea and they're worth, they're worth millions. And so the character piece, I think is a big thing um, to be thinking about too, as you gain wealth. Because I always teach that money is like a magnifying glass. It yep. makes you more of what you already are. And yep. so as you're on the journey of building wealth, I would encourage you to, to be giving, to be serving, to see, okay, to, to, to learn contentment. It's like all these more emotional pieces is big because if you get to the end of it and you do become wealthy, that person that has all that we just said is a much more joyous, I think, happier person with wealth versus the one that's just greedy and just wants and wants and wants and holds tightly. Yeah, and no, what I really like about it, uh, what you mentioned about misconceptions, and that was also the reason for our TikTok channel, actually the reason why it blew up. Um, it was because um, there were you know, people showing off their Lambo, their rented Lamborghinis and flashing with, uh, let me put it like here, fake money. We also have fake money here for our TikToks. Love it. Um, and show this off. And uh, I worked once for one of the uh, wealthy families in Germany and uh, you have know, super kind, super generous, super honorable people. Um, and that was a slight delta between both. And w once I saw this Lamborghini uh, video again, I was really mad. Actually, we started TikTok for a total different reason. Um, and then I, I said, no, I need to talk uh, about, about wealth and, and on that. And that became the basis. And then the, all the young people started asking, I, I should, so I shouldn't buy a Lambo when I have money. No, invest to be boring, you know, because then you can uh, reach wealth for yourself or even intergenerational wealth, which I think is uh, most satisfying. Mm -hmm.